joining, 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 joining. Here we go. Wow. Look at everybody jumping in. We're loving it. Okay. Got to make sure everybody. Audrey. Hey, hi. How are you? I love when people actually show their, their screens. I get to see people too. <laughs> <laughs> and Felicity, good to see you. Awesome. Jillian, hi. Oh, I love it. Vic, okay, there you go. Turning on the camera. I like it. Still got a couple more people jumping in here. Hi, Linda. Our two Lindas. Yes. How are you? We do. We got two Lindas. Hi yes, to both. Actually, yes. Uh, Good to see you both, right? <laughs> awesome. Oh, it's so good to see everybody today. So we're going to let a few more people in here. And so I hope everybody's having a wonderful week. Does anybody have anything amazing that they want to share that they got to get out and do or anything? No. How about get stuck inside with a storm? About that. Ooh, I think that people might have had that. Yeah. Any any weather concerns, right? Isn't it funny? You always say, oh yeah, the weather's always one of those side topics you can always talk about. But as a drone operator, it really is a topic, right? <laughs> so awesome. Well, if no one else has a drone story to share, I have got so much happening here that I want to share with everybody. I'm going to put in a bunch of links and it's going to look maybe like a book or something, right? Because there's so much that is happening. Uh, so first of all, I want to make sure that I do a big shout out for my sponsor for the Coffee Connection. That would be the Drone Professor or Professor Drones. And they design, develop, audit, and teach. They specialize in UAS subjects, uh, projects related to hazmat, pipeline, AI, and so much more. So I'm gonna put a link in there for that. And thank you, Professor Drones. Um, also, we have through the drone pros in San Diego uh, tomorrow evening, 5.30 Pacific time, uh, there's 10 tips for uh, drone operators. And so all of the drone pros have started sending in their tips and there's some pretty good information in there. So I will put a link into our chat that as well. And then, uh, the drone mix and mingle. So this is a great opportunity to actually get together in person, bring your drone, show it off, tell us what you got. You know, it's like a show and tell with drones. Uh, that's going on on uh, February uh, 3rd. It's actually on February 3rd. And that is in Lake Elsinore. So you'll have an opportunity to... Um, Come and show off your drones, right? Talk about it. We're also going to be talking about the subject of airspace authorizations through the drone zones. So I will go ahead and put that information into our chat really quick, like here. And got that going on. We're here to network. So I'd like everybody really quick, like right now, put your contact information into the chat and tell us a little bit about what you're doing in the drone industry. Not everybody's flying. There's different aspects of the drone industry. And so that's what we're here for. We're all about doing the network, right? And so I'm gonna check really quick like, and looking at everybody that's jumping in here. Um, so our guest speaker originally was scheduled to be Aaron Pierce sharing about remote ID. He had a flight demonstration that he was going to be doing today. And I'm sorry, he's not going to make it today. And so good news, everybody be out there working, right? So um, hopefully we'll get him scheduled later on to come back and talk a little bit more about remote ID. But we have Louise Jump here sharing with us today. She had her book launch 
And you should see the amazing material that's in this book. And I can't wait to hear from Louise, where she'll be sharing about the book and, of course, Fireside Chat and so much more. So, Louise, I am going to switch over to you, make you spotlight for everyone. Thank you for joining <laughs> us today. And congratulations on the book launch. That's awesome. Thanks, Desi. Thanks. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, thank you very much. It's been a great day. Um, I'm just going to see if I can share my screen. Um, and I, I just managed to I put together some um, some slides here. Um, but yes, today we had uh, we had the launch of um, Drone Professional Four. Some of you may know I've, I've been producing this book uh, uh, for the last couple of years, and um, Already today, we're we're uh, we're number one in in uh, in uh, categories on on uh, the uh, USA Amazon. <laughs> Thanks, Sheila <laughs> and Desi. <laughs> so it's really rather cool. But um, yes, we launched today. Um, as always, um, although with different topics, often um, we're featured uh, guidance. There's some case studies in the books, best practice, um, also some very thought provoking insights and discussions and pretty much evolving with the drone industry and also uh, commenting on the, the emerging um, aviation technologies as well. Um, this book this year, we've got um, 18 professionals from 11 countries, um, including the US, the UK, uh, Malta, uh, Nigeria, South Africa, Zambia, Italy, uh, and Australia. I think I, think I might have said them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we've got a widespread of professionals from around the world, um, which is really and always provides a very interesting um, point of discussion. Why there's a lot of similarities there's also across the world in how drones are utilized, the technology and so on. It, it's interesting that there are similarities, but there are also subtle differences. And that tends to come out really nicely. So, so yes, um, it came out today. Um, there is a link there at the bottom of the slide. Um, uh, giving you a um, a link to the Amazon site if you want to get it. I've also got a QR code at the end. Um, and yes, we we uh, it, I, I certainly started posting first thing this morning, and by lunchtime we got to the number one, which was fantastic. Um, really proud and pleased for everybody that's part of the book. Um, I think just in case uh, you didn't know, I, I started this all in. Um, oh, I've lost an image. There it is. <laughs> um, as you can, t you know, there, there's been three pre uh, previous editions, and it, I started this in 2019, pretty much as a way to provide a, a positive response. Um, there was a lot of heavy criticism going on, and particularly after Gatwick and that that dreadful um, comment that all pilots were clueless, criminal, and careless. Um, which was a um, you know caused a lot of anger, but I just felt there needed to be a positive way of responding to that. And so the point of the books is always to have the professionals showcase themselves and explain what they're doing and what what how professional they are, and why they're professional, and just to differentiate between um, some of the uh, illegal uses that are going on and actually showing that there's a, a there's a good body of people out there that are doing the right thing with drones and making a difference with them. So that's the whole point, really. It was to present a, a positive response to some criticism, um, asking the pro uh, professionals to speak for themselves. And it's been interesting over the years. It's um, really reflect changing and growing as the, the nature of, uh, as the people themselves are um, uh, getting more and more experienced and, and this industry matures, it's really interesting on the full scope of applications, or the, and equally the issues do bring up some of the points in the books of, you know, things of, uh, well, how do we deal um, with this particular issue or this is a challenge or that's a challenge. So it really does cover um, quite a lot of different topics. Um, and as does Drone Professional 4. Here's the the, uh, the gallery of the uh, professionals this year. Um, uh, they are a great bunch and it's interesting. They, comp they uh, comprise a mixture of business owners and operators, as well as uh, service providers. There's uh, policy makers and legislators in the group. Um, equally, uh, drone um, well suppliers, developers of, of software and the hardware. And the software is a really interesting discussion about um, assisting with um, 
compliance and operations management. Um, business coaches, as well as uh, instructors and training um, uh, people. Um, and mostly really the advocates, the influencers, those people that are, are really out there who have a passion for this industry, like yourselves. I mean, like this group, you know, just out there pushing for the better of this industry to make sure that it's um, seen um, and adopted um, um, in its rightful place. And some are award-winning professionals, including Kim James, who was an honoree um, with the Women and Drones Awards. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a fantastic mix of professionals um, from across the world, and it's always a great pleasure to meet uh, new authors and and equally just to work with everybody. Um, so it, it's always good fun um, doing this book. And Drone Professional Four, I think, reflects that uh, because of the way in which people are addressing their topics as well. Just to give you a very brief rundown on the focus areas in the book, there's uh, there's a career or a company path, evolution path, showing the growth of a particular company, um, and and now it's wide, uh, you know, now how it's matured into the industry and the, the and as demonstrated by the scope of the work that that's undertaken. There's a number of chapters that relate to business sales and growth strategies, as well as guidance on thought leadership and how to develop that for your own business um, growth. Um, importantly, um, there are some interesting discussions on counter drone technology. Um, is it a scourge or is it a necessity, for example? Um, I wrote a, a chapter about the, the accessibility of um, UAM and AAM to people with disabilities or mobility problems. That's a, a subject that's um, come up and I've noticed it, it's a really interesting one because it might be accidentally sidelined. <laughs> it, through no fault of, of what's going on, it, it, you know, in deliberately, it, it's just, you know, it's so easy to focus on something without thinking about the needs of others that may not be able to, to move so easily. And so it was a really interesting subject to discuss. Um, the other one was um, evaluating better matrix or, or sorry, using the best, uh, best matrix for evaluating procurement of drone security programs. Um, applications of drones in engineering consultancy, the oil and gas industry, and for mapping seagrass in the Mediterranean. Um, there were also the, the more sort of operational sides in terms of um, the importance of training in reflecting in safe operations, ongoing, always training sort of focus, as well as the ben benefits of um, in, in the company efficiency uh, or company management efficiency from, from compliance software. Um, this was specifically developed by the two authors, and it's a really interesting study on how effective it is. And then there's a step-by-step -step guide for farmers on how to select the best ag tech solutions by, by a gentleman who's in the software, um, ag tech software company, and a very interesting step-by-step -step guide. And the uh, development of new UAV regulations in Zambia, very good um, discussion on that um, with a very well-known um, specialist uh, who's who um, or specialists uh, from Italy and Zambia. So really interesting discussion there. And I mean that's it. I mean I'm not not necessarily because I want you to rush out and buy the book and find out for yourself, but <laughs> that would be nice. But, but, it actually um, looks but like some wanna... people already are. We've got a couple. Well, in yeah, it. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> um, but there's a QR code there that should take you to the um, the Amazon page. Um, at the moment is on a special promotional price, so so please grab it. And uh, but I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, but really, it's this book is we all have a lot of fun doing it, and it's just so important, in my opinion, for the drone industry to keep sharing what people are doing um, to help raise awareness, to help generate understanding, and just to just to help with the integration of this amazing industry in, into what goes on out there. So yeah, so that's it. <laughs> Awesome. Wow. And I love that it's such a variety. You know, there's so many different aspects of this industry to begin with. And this book just really allows you to dive deep into one of the other topics that might be as special on someone's heart and the passion that they have. Um, one of the topics that you actually mentioned was ag. So I know specifically in our area, I'm constantly seeing things where drones are being used for agriculture. And so mm -hmm. what a great, great opportunity to kind of see what's being used and 
in the operations being done. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. That's awesome. <laughs> and I know uh, sales are probably going up as we speak because I keep seeing people <laughs> say, done, done. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> <laughs> but um, can you tell us just from an insider's point of view, what's the experience of actually putting a book in, together and getting it published and that you've had so many success stories behind you and so uh, a lot of us aren't familiar with what that what does that process look like um uh, it, yeah it, it starts it, it well it starts with all oh, you know um sort of I, I don't I tend to use LinkedIn that's my primary social media platform that I use um and I I uh, to date, the, the process is to say, hey, does anybody want to be involved in the book? And I put a post out there and I get a response. And, and um, then it's sort of saying, OK, well, away you go, effectively, with because the, there's a writer's guide that I issue. And it says in there quite clearly what happens and what you need to do. And equally, how, how you should structure your, your article. You'll see with all of the articles that they're not in there to say, me, 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 and bye, bye, bye. They are, they are genuinely, um, they are, it's, it's showing the expertise in a way that, that showing the expertise without having to oversell, if you know what I mean, because I'm not encouraging that in the book. The point is to raise discussion, to, to offer advice, to, to um, explain how you got from where you were going, where you started to where you're going, you know, to, to the whole point that the audience is growing but the audience is as much for people that are looking at the industry to think, well, should I get into this um, in whatever shape, form it might be, whether it's from the software side, the um, hardware side, the flying, the data management, you name it. You know, it's a wide audience and equally stakeholders, uh, regulators have, uh, I know that government departments have copies of the book, um, things like that. It, it's to raise awareness. So it's, it's important that there is structure in the articles that are there to share information and not just sell. Overtly selling yourself is in, in the articles doesn't, is not required. <laughs> um, so that you'll see that. And that's, I think that's one of the reasons why the book is, has, has, has worked is because it, it um, it's the sharing of knowledge, you know, rather than trying to get, you know, blatant sales, sales. <laughs> Despite what I'm doing right now, <laughs> <laughs> I got another one. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's a guide that sort of goes out, and I, everybody that says yes, I want to do it, they get the guide, and then they they they've got a certain amount of time to write their article. It's normally about fifteen hundred words to two thousand, uh, and then there's a need to provide a bio and any images that go with the. Um, uh, with with the article, and then it's a case of me gathering around uh, um, a herd of kittens. <laughs> As I get one in the box, another one jumps out. It's not a herd of kittens, is it? I don't know what what a group of kittens would be, but it's a box of kittens, um, and it's a it's a case of pulling them all in together. And then uh, then we then I do a complete edit of everything, and then we get everybody to approve the edits, and then it forms it's uh, Andrew Priestley is the gentleman who who um, pulls this all together and um, and publishes it for us and and it's um, this is the result and and we 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 go with the launch with the Kindle and then the paperback comes out shortly afterwards and there is nothing better I've only I haven't got one of these ones yet but there is nothing better than when you hold your own book in your hand as you know, <laughs> it is wonderful yes. when you open the box and there they are. And to give them to people, or, uh, you know, is just a wonderful experience. So, and everybody gets to do that. You know, that's uh, that is a part of the book. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And I know inside the book, there's, like I said, a several different verticals of the industry. And so when you're preparing it and getting it ready, are people just coming to you with their thoughts and ideas? Are you outlining that structure? Because it's I that's the thing I love about each one of the books that you have put out is every one of them are so different. 
Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, I mean, the, the 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 topics that people are picking are reflecting what they're doing in the industry. And as you know, the industry is evolving all the time. Um, but often I don't tell people what to do because it's it, every time um, the, the subjects that come out, you know, that it needs to reflect what they, their, their expertise is. So I said, well, okay, I do try and encourage people if I know that they do it is, well, can you write, if you're going to write about counter drone technology, it'd be really cool if you could cover this, if, if you know, you know, and sometimes I might say that, or they'll come to me and say, should I cover this? Should I cover that? But invariably, I leave the choice to the author because it's funny, what the, one of the very first books, there were two articles about using drones in conservation. And one of them said, no, it doesn't work. And the other one said, yes, it does. And it was fascinating. And yet they didn't really contradict each other, even though that sounds like they should, because they came from different angles. And so, and I, I, I left, it, it worked really well. It was interesting. Somebody was designing a drone for specific anti-poaching. And yet another person was saying the one that they were using wasn't working. So it was, it was really fascinating. I just, and it was, it, even though it sounds like they should contradict, it didn't, it worked really well. And to date, really, I leave, I leave the authors to, to come up with their subjects. And as I say, they reflect current trends most, uh, you know, and it's interesting, the nature of the discussions are evolving. It's, you know, the first book covers a lot of career, um, uh, company startup stories, as you would expect so so early on in the industry, but now it's moving on to the issues. How are we going to deal with regulations? How are we going to deal with counter drone, um, or oh, sorry, illegal drone issues? How are we going to deal with um, air mobility, uh, urban air mobility? So it's really interesting um, that the subjects are, are, if I can say, maturing with the maturing industry. And I don't often don't need to say much. Everybody else is saying what they want. They're the ones saying, well, I want to talk about this. Okay, great. You know, <laughs> I agree. E even in the realm of education, there's been such a, a change over time. You know, in the beginning, we would say, is anybody familiar with drones? Have you been flying a drone? Do you know anybody that flies a drone? And now it's just become so much more commonplace that the, mm -hmm. the whole thing is shift. And so I imagine from the standpoint of putting out a book, it, it's shifted quite a bit over, over time as well. So I put mm -hmm. a, a question into our chat, if, if there was a topic or a subject, that anybody would like to see and um oh. the one person has said search and rescue um oh, and so okay. there is a couple other questions in there is there something in this book or maybe past books about search and rescue um no no there hasn't that's a very good that's a very good topic thank you um no we haven't got that one yet <laughs> All right, so that means Drone Professionals 5 is going to be in the works, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I think so. <laughs> uh, and then another question in there, is it available on Audible or will it be in the future? Not yet. You know, that's not the first time I've been asked that. Um, I, I need to investigate that. I understand having these, having books converted into audible versions can be very expensive um so we need to find a way of of uh, i don't think i can do it <laughs> but um but no no because i know some people do do their own books but uh, no i don't i don't think um I, I i would like to find out because that's not the first time i've been asked um so yeah thank you is anybody familiar with books on audible or anything in that direction uh, I know uh, Louise has always had success, great success with Kindle. And I can't believe just in this one day, putting it out today, you're already, it's on fire. Oh, yeah. that was a great segue, right? So let's talk about fire chat, <laughs> fireside chat, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just happen to have a slide ready. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, this Thursday at um, uh, 17.30 South African Standard Time, which I think, Sharon, if if you're there, you I think you know what the difference is. Uh, yes, that will be 9.30 Central Time, 10.30 Eastern Time. Thank you. Uh, 
Yes. Everybody else can calculate from there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, the, the fireside chat, the first one of this year, it, it's a little bit later in January because we have to allow for um, the way in which uh, the, the holidays work here because it's our summer and the school holidays and so on. But um, Mercy Macau will be joining us um, from Kenya um, to talk about the importance and the value of empowering uh, young girls and women into the aviation industry through mentorship. Uh, Mercy was uh, also an honoree um, for the uh, for last year's or uh, yeah last year's uh, Women and Drones Awards, and I'm really looking forward to chatting to her. She's an amazing lady, um, and just what she's done and and the organisations she's associated with and how she's driving um, and trying to close the the uh, gender gap in in aviation. Well, congratulations to her too. I, I know she wasn't able to actually come to the award ceremony. And so it will be great to actually just see her via Zoom and hear some of uh, her story and insight and such. So that'll be fantastic. And so one more time, can we share what time? And I think that was Eastern time. I'm putting it in the chat now. All right. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. There we go. <laughs> and you know, just to complicate things, um California and its time change and all in all of that and so I have to like schedule okay what time of the year is this is it at 8 30 on Pacific Coast or is it at 7 30 and so uh we'll go ahead and put that information in there also do we have a link that we could put into our chat um for the phone side chat um there is a QR code on the image um I haven't got a uh, I'll have to Give me a I'll moment and I'll take it out. I'll grab the chat. Okay. Oh, thank uh, you. Sheila's really good at grabbing those links for us as well. And so she might be able to grab that while we're uh, bringing it up. Uh, Linda made a great point. Uh, her son had used a voice artist to perform his book. Um, kind of curious, Linda, what was the book about? And it increased uh, in sales. So that's that's an interesting point on there. And um, I can answer that question if you want. Please do. Um, apparently through Amazon or through Audible, you can find voice artists. Um, I don't know where it is, but apparently he matched through somebody there. Um, and his, his genre is um, Regency and World War One or those kinds of um books so um i couldn't tell you how what the sales are doing um but apparently that's the agreement that he made is to do it for a percentage so you might look into that awesome awesome is there anyone here that is considered doing any sort of public publishing a book or maybe writing an article here we go for another little segue for the uh, Vertical Space Magazine, right? Felicity handles that. <laughs> and so for Women in Drones Vertical Space Magazine, uh, Felicity, I saw you had put a link in there or a um, kind of posted into our chat about the magazine. And so can you tell us a little bit about what is involved with it? How do we go about putting an article in there? What are the dates? Because like Louise, you have to have those cutoff dates. Absolutely. Yes. Well, um, right now we're I've gotten some great submissions and I'm looking for more. I'm really trying to expand the scope of vertical space to air, you know, land and sea. So if anybody has any ideas about, you know, resources and people that might have a little um, insight on those evolving technologies in that aspect as well. But we, of course, are loving any drone technologies and, you know, any ideas we were open to. So if you want to give me a, you know, just a email, that'd be wonderful. Um, the deadline for the spring issue is February 1st. Um, so there is a link. Um if you go to the Women in Drones webpage and look at the vertical space um, <clears throat> page, there's a link in there. But I'm happy to share that with anybody if they need it. So it, it's in the it's in the chat. I just dropped it in the chat oh, for you. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks. You're welcome. 
this great yeah. information we are sharing today. Yes. Thank it's you. It's a perspective that we don't think about much, but it is awesome because a lot of people have thought about it. What about if I was to write an article or something? And then Vic put a question in there. Can the article be co-posted article? So... Vic, do you have something in mind or a question you want to kind of talk uh, about? Yeah. Um, I actually have an article that came out uh, last Friday in The Hill um, about the uh, ASDA, so the American Security, blah, 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 American Security Drone Act. Um, mm -hmm. After 14 days from last Friday, it can be reposted as long as it says it was originally posted in The Hill. Um, is that something that would work? I can put a link in the chat real quick. Um, but that's but go ahead sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you um that's no okay. that sounds amazing and sharon's answering it too so i see in the in the chat so <laughs> we would love awesome. that we would okay thank you so okay. much reach out email me if you'd like or you can go straight to the link yeah i just i'll bookmark the link awesome thank you yes oh fantastic and so we've got the link in there so we can all gather mm. that information if you wanted. Make sure we're going to save the chat at the end of this, right? <laughs> um, so I'm quite sure Vic has several articles that he has written. <laughs> and so um, I don't know if it's premature or not, but Eric, I know you've done a lot of exploration and, and outings and such like that. And I uh, had some things published in the past or moving forward in the future. Um, I know we also have a drone event coming up on the 20th at your place. But wow. uh, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your publications. I know photos, you've been very successful and you've won things with your photos, but have you had articles posted? It's coming, I know. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, Felicity just got my call off your dog's um, article on Mongolian drone flying. There's a Mongolian saying, Korhi Korani, where you shout at a house when you're entering, call off your dogs. That's sort of a greeting in Mongolian. So I got to practice that a little. So yeah, I guess they're going to put my article on flying drones in Mongolia. And Dronestagram just put an article about flying drones in Svalbard. Um, so yeah, I've 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 had a few things going on. As for this this upcoming weekend, um, my feeling is we should just go ahead and do it because it's it's hard for me to find a weekend where I can block out both the main house and the studio. And we're heading into wildflower season, and I can guarantee you I'm not going to be able to line up both of them in wildflower season. So my feeling is we should just go ahead and do it. If worse comes to worse, my wife's making pad thai. We can hang out in the house and eat pad thai and then um, uh, go out and fly. And since I've flown in all sorts of horrible places, I'd be glad to share whatever tips I have for um, effectively taking pictures flying backwards in the rain. <laughs> so his his uh, drone zone sanctuary is in Borrego Springs, and we have an event planned this weekend. Come out, everybody is welcome if you're in the area. But there is a slight chance of rain, and so back to that conversation of rain and weather, right? <laughs> it does really affect <laughs> as our drone operations. So if anybody wants more information, Eric, can you throw your uh, sure information in there that way anybody could reach out and uh, ask about that so does anybody have any questions because we have louise here sharing with us about her success and writing a book publishing it any of those steps you know what is actually involved in it i know that's something that had always been on my mind prior to and i turned to louise for a lot of insight and information on it and so if you have a hot topic and you've been thinking you wanted to uh, put something out um, this is a great time to ask what are those steps well, you know you have this brilliant idea but how do you get that ball rolling how do you share it with others and while we wait to see if anybody pops in there with any questions Louise do you have any 
suggestions or thoughts that you could share in that uh, direction? Um, yeah, d um, do it. <laughs> uh, you know, if you think you've well, got a book and you do it. <laughs> Seriously, I, you might say, oh, somebody's already written about this, somebody, but they haven't. They haven't written about your experience, your actual in involvement, and you will. everybody has their own different perspectives on something. So I would really say, do, think, think on a person. I, I remember saying this to you, Desi, write the book or write the article to a person. Don't be shy of thinking that there's thousands of people out there. Write to one person and focus on that person who you would really want to tell about your subject. And told me that about looking into a camera. If you're being on an interview, don't think about this audience out there. Just think of the person behind a camera who's looking at you and talk to them. So it's the same really with, 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 the, uh, with the book. I, I would say, do it really. It is the most wonderful, experience to to do it and when you hold that book in your hand i cannot tell you what a joy it is to open that box and there it is and you go that's mine and there's a book over there on a bookshelf and it's got my name on it it's fantastic uh, me me sorry but but the point being is <laughs> you know it, there is nothing more wonderful than and doing something like that and having that that qualification of what you do in a book form or you know or in an article form or in a collaborative book whatever way you want to do i, I cannot stress highly enough what a wonderful process it is and and it's worth it every step of the way awesome so i'm curious throw it into the chat have you actually considered i want to write a book or i want to write a story or get that out of there you know because a, a lot of people have but they put it on that back burner and take the advice that louise just said just do it make that step hey sharon's I got a hand, hand up I see your hand up. Go ahead, Eliza. Can Where? you hear me? Can y'all hear me? Okay, good. Sorry, sometimes my headphones do weird things. Um, I recently, um, I work for an environmental consulting firm and we have found a new, we have, re the cost benefit ratio really has hit a sweet spot for us where we can affordably create 3D models using relatively very cheap drones um, and software to and post-processing software to create 3D models of historic structures that need to be demolished. And it's considered as part of the uh, overall NEPA regulatory environmental process as part of mitigation for maybe you know taking away a part of history if if they've got an architecturally significant structure. Um, and that is something that I have been wanting to, I don't think it's a book, um, but wanting to uh, post an article or even a blog somewhere. Um, but I've just been having trouble maybe getting started or thinking about where that should go. Like if it should be focused on cultural resources management, people um or you know trying to get um you know trying to inspire more purposes because it is sort of a new thing only because the regulatory agencies are starting to see it as a product they might want in for a mitigation strategy um so i'm just throwing that out there for anyone that that is doing a blog or managing a magazine or something you know i'd be happy to do a write-up or something if that sounds like something y'all would be interested in I kind of just maybe need a little help with the not the content but the uh though I always love an editor to read my work <laughs> but um you know if there is someone if you think someone might be interested or or you know would like to have a little blurb um about that you know I'd be happy to to contribute Eliza I'll reach out so to you. Thank you so much. Thanks. See, we're making connections. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So uh Desi, Sam. Desi, sorry. I was gonna I was gonna say that one of the things that people might want to consider, and I know Vic said that he doesn't have the focus to do a book, but Vic, you could take your articles and it'd almost be like what Luis has done, where there's several different um authors and put yours in a book and it could be different topics. But my other comment was gonna be generically, 
I would encourage people to consider writing a book for two reasons. One, it positions you as a subject matter expert on whatever topic it is, but outside of the industry, it increases interest in terms of speaking, paid speaking engagements. As Desi knows, I do quite a bit of external industry speaking engagements. And the only books that I have in on the industry is are the children's books that Wendy and I wrote several years ago. Well, we get inquiries all the time from organizations, from libraries who pay have paid us to come in to speak. And the thing is, they usually have a limited budget. And the, the nice thing about a speaking engagement, uh, you can maybe offer them 10 free books or something or books at a discount if they're going to have a large audience. You can offer to do a um, signing session, which they all love because it's another way of engagement. But a book, and Luis, I don't know if you've done any paid speaking engagements with any of the books, but books help position you external of the industry as a subject matter expert. And more and more people are looking to hear about what's going on, not in the industry so much, but about drones, because they really don't know what to ask. And so you start off talking about the basics and the session of an hour or two goes by very quickly. And uh, as Luis, as Wendy and I have done, we and as, as and Desi has done, you self-publish on Amazon. That's the easy part is that you can just do it all on Amazon. They have the templates. You put it in there. You get so you get a friend. You get someone on Fiverr or someone to proof your work, and off you go. So I would highly encourage you as a way to have ongoing revenue to consider writing a, a book. Awesome. My book number two is in the way in the making right now. <laughs> awesome great information thank you Sharon thank you very much for sharing that and inspiring also um, Sam had asked about in our chat and uh, I know we only have a few more minutes left here but uh, Sam had asked about what are the steps in getting an opportunity to work on a drone project Of course, Eric had uh, <laughs> answered that one, grab a pickaxe, <laughs> right? <laughs> there you go. Come on out. Uh, Sam was actually on the uh, adventure that we went on to uh, the drone zone here a couple months ago. And so she's familiar with the, the location as, as well. But does anybody have any offer, uh, information to offer uh, as far as besides the pickaxe one? Thank you for that, Eric. But uh, <laughs> uh, getting to be able to be invited out. Okay, everybody's going to ponder it for a bit. Um, Vic uh, had put in there not a book I'll stick with the articles you do a lot of writing and so I encourage you also to check out the DSPA uh, if you could put that link in there if you haven't already Vic that'd be great because he really does write a lot of very insightful articles and it, not to do the shameless plug but if you're not a member you should be because of what they do for our industry and so thank you and Kenji for everything you do um focus the ability to write any longer I totally get that um Vic your articles they're just saying thank you there Sharon says thank you uh she's in oh Lind is in touch with a publisher to help people get their books published that's awesome Awesome. I hope that's going well. Are you planning to publish something, Linda? Actually, no. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> I met I met this gal um a few years ago and um she did actually encourage me on on a number of things and I'm that's just not where my head is at, but um she has helped a number of people um get their book published and so I've already given out her name to a couple of people here uh, privately, and I'm happy to do that again. She's um, really easy to work with and um, has some great insights. So if anybody wants that, I'm happy to share. Oh, great, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and it looks like, Jill, I was wondering, did you get my book? Cause you won my book, correct? Yeah, did it come yet? I'll have to. Okay, good. Um, and she, Jill had mentioned in there when Notre Dame Cathedral burned, one of the computer gaming companies had done a, uh, the 3D models of it. They offered their models 
and the French are are using those to rebuild it. Yes, isn't that phenomenal? You know, that is amazing. And and to me, that's really close to my heart right there because that's just what 3D models are phenomenal for doing is uh, preserving history. And so- um, They used a drone to help put the fire out too. Oh. It was rolly tracky dudes, but it, mm -hmm, it was a drone. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Awesome. And they had drones flying over while the fire was going on. It was awful, but they had drones doing that. Yes. Ah. So, well, does anybody have any other questions? We've got the expert here. We have Louise here who has published multiple successful books. Does anybody have any other questions for her? Um, Louise, I know you put up the QR code. Do you mind putting your information into the chat one more time, just so that if somebody wanted to reach out, would they be able to do that? Yeah. Okay, awesome. And then um, just a total side note, I I would dearly love for Women in Drones to do a South African meetup. And so we're definitely going to be working on that, okay? <laughs> I've got to put that on my calendar. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, Vic has one more thing that he would like to kind of mention about the uh, operations over people waiver. And I just want to do one last big shout out to Louise. Thank you very much. And congratulations. Awesome work. Love the variety that you offer in the books that you are providing. So thank you very, very much. Thank you for jumping in here and having this prepared for us today. Vic, I'm going to segue over to you and awesome. you have an announcement to make. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Um, I think it was last, was it last week or the week before? Anyway, uh, the FAA waiver office put my uh, Ops Over People waiver application, well, not mine, but the, the Ops Over People waiver applications were based on my waiver on hold um, because they'd started having some questions. <laughs> uh, but I did get an email this morning from my waiver office contact, and he basically told me that they're all having a meeting this week to figure out what exactly they want to look for in the waivers. Um, they're worried about, it's not really copy and paste, but they're kind of worried about the mirrored applications, how people might be basically just writing the application and that's it. And they don't care about the rest of it, which is if you if you saw my instructions or if you've seen any of my webinars, that's not how it's supposed to work. Um, but I'll know more hopefully by the end of the week and um, be able to put something out to reset the process. If you have your application in, I, I I seriously seriously doubt they're going to just cancel them because that would that would put them so far behind right now. Um, I think what they'll probably do is send out some RFIs, which is request for information, um, to get a little more clarification on some aspects of your application. And if you already have a waiver, there may be some modifications to that waiver. So um, that's that's all I know at the moment. Is these the, there may be there may be there may be <laughs> nothing solid, but as soon as I hear more from them. Um, uh, I'll pass it along one way or another. So that's all I had for that. It's just that came this morning. So I wanted to announce real quick. Okay. So everything's kind of on hold. At Time the... out. That's right. Yep. Okay. <laughs> they were like, wow, I didn't know Vic had that much pull around here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any pull. I do not have pull in the waiver office. I just have contacts. <laughs> I, you know, I, I totally understand with the copy paste thing, you know, you have made it abundantly clear that do not do this. And that is not the approach to take. And they really do want to see your safety parameters and such. Mm -hmm. And You've so you've met I, people, right? Does it? You've met them. Yeah. They're, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just... And so they'll just copy paste and make it nice and easy. And they're probably going, yay, thanks, Vic. You made work easy for me. <laughs> That's not how it works. So, I guarantee and, you there's only five yeah. people in the office. If they see one that looks like mine, it's going to get denied. So. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, and and you it abundantly clear. Yeah. So thank Good. you for sharing. We hope mm -hmm. to be back on track within a couple of weeks, though. Can you call plagiarism? I mean, that basically is... <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, I guess technically, yeah, they publish it. So they are published. That would be plagiarism, wouldn't it? But if I told them they could have my information, but not copy it, yeah, it would still be. But no, I don't think the FAA cares about plagiarism. They just want you to fly safe. Wow. 
you know, we might want to talk to Eric about that. <laughs> There's a connection you're about. You know? There you go. We got someone here. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. And we're going to wrap it up so everyone can jump on to their next meeting. I thank everybody for coming. Thank you, Louise, for sharing. Congratulations again. And super excited to see everybody next week. And have a wonderful week. I want to hear some drone stories. Oh, look at Eric's already got some information in there. Whoa, I'm, supposed to, application. Go, I'm oh. supposed to go fly this afternoon, Desi. It's only 19 degrees. Oh. Oh. I'll take 19 degrees. I'll I will take 19 it. Degrees. That's <laughs> it was minus point. seven this morning here. Yeah. Yeah. And I bet it was worse point. for Sharon. Yeah. I'm not That's seeing wind chill. I'm not mentioning that yet. No, no, no. Uh, no. I'm sorry. I am going to go fly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, thanks, Eric. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. yeah now I know how to make money yes. on that, Eric. Thank you. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining. We have a wonderful week. We look forward to seeing everybody next week. Uh, and have fun flying, but be safe, right? <laughs> All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Desi. Good day. All right. Bye. That kind of wraps it up.